Hello and welcome. I'm Sean, AKA Sean Bob, AKA SB. And I'm an embryologist who likes to talk about things and likes to hear himself talk about things. We're gonna work on that introduction. It's not quite there, it's getting close. We'll get there though. All right, in this video, I just wanted to talk about how and why I became an embryologist. So when people ask me what I do and I tell them, their immediate follow-up question is, oh, how did you get into that? And I don't know if they're looking for some magical background story of like, oh, you know, I learned I love reproduction when I was like five years old and I've just always wanted to be an embryologist. And to be honest, I, I kind of have a hard time answering that question because it's not a very easy, simple answer. Like there's a whole storyline, there's a whole progression of things that happened that led up to me becoming an embryologist. So here we are, I'm gonna answer that question and hopefully, I don't know, people will just, see this and so when they meet me they don't ask me that question all right first of all i didn't necessarily take high school very seriously um in my defense i didn't have a ton of guidance through those years of my life i was kind of just being a kid and i like playing sports i was in high school to have fun and, and play sports it's not like i was wild i wasn't some crazy high schooler i just you know i graduated and that's pretty cool that I made it to that point. I've also thought there are certain teachers that if I ran into them and I told them what I do now, they would probably fall over dead. But after graduation, I did go to college because I don't know, that's what you're supposed to do to figure out what to do with your life. But I had no idea what I wanted to do. All I knew was that I wanted to feel passionate about what I did and I wanted to enjoy what I did. And this stems from the advice that I always received from my grandpa, Reed. He was in the Marine Corps for like 30 something years. He was a Colonel, very respected. He, I am certain, convinced that he loved every minute of his service in the Marine Corps. He was a Marine through and through. And the advice that he would always give me was, listen, Sean, I don't care what it is that you go do just make sure you love it and you're passionate about it. And because I lived with my grandparents in, in high school, I really took that advice to heart. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to be like my grandpa. I wanted to really love what I did. So early in my college career, I decided to lean towards the medical field because I figured, you know, that's a really stable career choice. People are always gonna need medical treatment. And to go along with that, I chose biology as my major because if you choose biology, then you'll meet a lot of the prereqs for medical school. And if not medical school, at least I'd be probably heading into the medical field area. And as I got higher up in my science classes, I decided to shadow these two physicians for about a year because I still wanted to make sure that you know, going to medical school, becoming a physician was what I really wanted to do. And I am so glad that I did shadow those two physicians because through that experience, I realized that I was, I was pretty certain becoming a physician was not what I wanted to do. I thought, you know, in the future, I don't think this is gonna be something that I will feel excited about every day. And at that same time, I took a class that changed everything. It changed my complete trajectory and it gave me insight into the direction that I wanted to head with my career. That class was actually virology, the study of viruses. Now it was a smaller class. I think there was only seven of us in that class. And the format was every other day for an hour and a half lecture. And part of the curriculum was that each one of us was going to have to teach an entire lecture on one of the classes of viruses. Now the, the class of viruses that I chose to present on was herpes simplex because I have gotten cold sores my whole life and I'd always heard all these different things about like, oh, it's because the nurses kissed you in the hospital or people always making jokes like, oh, that's an STD. It's like, well, I'm eight years old, so that's probably not. And as I learned about the herpes virus, specifically HSV-1 that causes cold sores, I learned that we did not know why some people get cold sores and other people don't. Because it's estimated that, you know, 90% of the population's been exposed to it, so we probably all have the virus, but for some reason in some people, it reactivates and we get a cold sore, but in other people, they don't. And this is gonna sound really naive, but it blew my mind that something so prevalent like cold sores, we just didn't know. And it didn't just blow my mind, it made me really excited. 
that there's something so common that we don't know the answer. The idea of exploring something unknown, especially something so so common and prevalent, appealed to me. It piqued my interest. Like, ooh, I like the idea of of being an explorer, of asking the right questions and coming up with a study design and, and protocols and my perfectionism of like, ooh, we could follow the exact protocol and maybe find the answer to something. That's when it clicked. I want to be a scientist. I want to be working in science. I want to be in the nitty gritty, the microscopic world. I want to be asking the questions that need to be asked. I didn't want to be the physician prescribing the medicine. I wanted to be the one on the microscope trying to figure out why that's a problem, what's going on there. So from there, I stumbled upon the field of IVF, in vitro fertilization, and embryology in particular. And it sounded like it checked a lot of my boxes. You know, it was going to be involved with medicine. It's in the medical field, but it's definitely the, the sciencey part of it where I would be working on a on a bench on the microscope and following protocols, which mm, sound of a protocol. What a sexy word, protocol. So after finishing my undergrad, I started as an andrologist in 2014. And after just a couple of months, I moved into the embryology lab and embryologists, it's just pretty much all on the job training because it's still such a specific field. There's starting to be training centers out there, but for the most part, you got to learn it on the job. And I quickly fell in love with this field. I really enjoyed what I was doing as an embryologist. I then went on to finish my master's degree in embryology and andrology from Eastern Virginia Medical School in 2018. Now in my introductory video on here, I explained why I have stepped into social media and now YouTube. You know, I really enjoy sharing information. Um, it's a challenge and it forces me to learn the topic on a, on a deeper level. Plus I'm looking for ways to connect and bridge the gap between the IVF lab and the IVF patient because I crave more of a human connection with the people that I'm helping as an embryologist. Which brings us to today, the present time. Um, where I'm at now as an embryologist, I want to start getting more into research. I want to design studies um, to look into things to improve our knowledge on reproduction and infertility so that we could hopefully help more people achieve pregnancy who want to. So thanks for tuning in and listening to me, I don't know, I guess talk about myself again.